get you anything on uh, Amazon or anything like that. No, this is a scraper card that the uh, Department of Agriculture has designed uh, to basically uh, be effectively used to, to uh, scrape the egg masses. Now, it's not saying you have to use this. You can use many different tools uh, in order to get the job done, but this is a kind of a neat, uh, neat tool to use that has tons of information on it. Uh, so protocol states to try to collect the egg mass. So what you would do is put a bag underneath it um, or a container, uh, scrape using a downward motion trying to collect all those eggs. Uh, when you have done this, for those of you that haven't already, uh, the, the eggs, individual eggs themselves kind of pop out, um, so it's a good idea to capture them. So you could either double bag that, throw it away, burn it if your municipality allows it, uh, or you could add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol maybe, um, uh, or hand sanitizer or something like that that would kill those eggs. If you don't have a container to put it in, uh, you should try to crush those eggs as much as you can. Uh, using a stick or a rock, kind of roll it up the egg mass, you'll hear them pop. It's extremely satisfying for those of you that <laughs> like to kill an fly like I do. Um, you can hear them pop because uh, we're not sure if you were to just scrape them onto the ground, would they hatch? Uh, you know, we're not sure. Would something come along and eat them? Maybe, but uh, you know, protocol states try to collect them, uh, and that gives uh, an assurance that that they are dead. Does spray poison kill the eggs? Or no? <laughs> probably, there are probably some forms of control that would be effective to to spray them. Unfortunately, a lot of the egg masses are out of reach. You know, even uh, a trained eye is only going to be able to get about 30 to 40 percent of the egg masses. Uh, just because of where they're being laid in the tops of trees, um, you know, under cover, out of sight, um, it can be a little difficult. It would be much easier to just scrape the egg masses rather than going around and spraying something. And uh, to find a chemical um, powerful enough to kill them, to go through that coating and kill those eggs, if you do a broadband application, you would more than likely cause more harm than good to other beneficials uh, in that area. So some tree banning. Um, obviously, most of you are familiar with these. I've seen quite a few on my travels through Montgomery County as well. Uh, tree banning works best made through August. As I stated earlier, um, there is a volunteer banning program through uh, the Department of Agriculture and Penn State Extension where they supply you the banning material uh, to ban Alanthus trees or Tree of Heaven on your own property. Uh, you have to um, uh, basically list the trees that you're going to to uh, apply the bands to collect them on a uh, bi-weekly basis and count the number of nymphs on them uh, so this can be a, a pretty good process uh, when you have thousands and thousands of nymphs similar to those bands up there uh, we spent plenty of time capturing and, and uh, counting nymphs um, with this banding material I had stated earlier that it's a little difficult to capture the adults on it now that picture on the bottom there uh, is the uh, flypaper traps that you can get at Home Depot, Tractor Supply, Lowe's, I think some other garden stores have carried it. It's like $8 a roll for a 30-foot roll. Uh, I think it's about 10 inches in, in width. Um, you wrap one uh, band around the tree about chest height, uh, and that's all you need. You change it out as needed. Um, you know, the one thing, the one issue with banding is the potential for bycatch. Uh, so you could potentially capture some beneficial insects depending on which trees that you're banding. Um, we prefer banding Alanthus trees, the tree of heaven, because uh, there are minimal um, uh, beneficials that visit it for pollinating, things like that to feed on it. Very few things feed on it as well. Uh, so you'll limit that risk. Uh, another thing with banding to keep in mind is you could capture some other critters. Uh, we've caught feathers, we've caught birds uh, on the banding material. We've had squirrel fur on banding material as well, so it's something to consider. Uh, there are a few ways in which to avoid this. I don't have a picture up in this slide here, uh, but if you go to Penn State Extension's website, they have put up some really uh, cool videos of, of their banding uh, program. Uh, you can cut the banding material in half, usually using about like five or six inches of the banding material rather than that full 10 inches. Just decreases the surface area a little bit for those birds to get uh, stuck to it and you still catch plenty of lanternfly. You just may have to change it out a little bit if you're in areas with a higher population and they get covered up. Uh, what you could also do is build some caging material using chicken wire. Uh, that will help uh, keep the birds away from it and the lanternfly can still crawl up underneath that chicken wire uh, if you allow it to, to remain a couple inches off of that tree. Uh, you know, there's also some homemade banding material that you can make. You can use duct tape. 
Uh, that tends to deteriorate very quickly though in the environment. After a couple of rains or a couple of nights, it seems like the duct tape doesn't work anymore. Uh, but they do make some material that you can spread on other tapes. Uh, it's called Tanglefoot. Um, that works you can to, to capture a lot of insects as well. Is the, uh, this program up here you're talking about, is that restricted to those two uh, types of 